الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فما زالت تلك دعواهم حتى جعلناهم حصيدا خامدين وما خلقنا السماء والأرض وما بينهما لاعبين لو أردنا أن نتخذ له ولا اتخذناه من لدنا إن كنا فاعلين بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فيدمغه فإذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل مما تصفون وله من في السماوات والأرض ومن عنده لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ولا يستحسرون يسبحون الليل والنهار لا يفترون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Last night we read this is Surah Anbiya Last night we read that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There was many a people before these people of Makkah that were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَمَا زَالَتْ تِلْكَ دَعْوَاهُمْ حَتَّى جَعَلْنَهُمْ حَصِيدًا خَامِدِينَ They kept on crying, looking at the punishment and realizing their mistake but that was too late until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala annihilated them basically like a cut um, crop or something a fire that has burned and totally extinguished وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَعِبِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all these things that happen between the skies and the earth and the sky and the earth itself basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have not created it for play for jest or for no reason لَوْ وَرَدْنَا if we were like that that we wanted to play make things for our play or for our past time نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ حَشَاهُ وَكَلَّهِ لَوْ وَرَدْنَا أَنَّ اتَّخِذَ لَهْوَا if we had intended to have a past time لَتَّخَذْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا in kunna fa'ilin we would have had it from our own if we were ever to do so so this law the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started this law aradna law is the kalima where the thing is not there the 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 way of saying is that it is not there this is that that is not there if it were there then it would have been so but it is not there so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all play all jest and needing all past times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an invite for people to think that you see this, that uh, for example a small child, it really loves to play with small toys. Now a grown up man who's matured, imagine them playing with little toys. That does not happen. So you see in your life cycle that you as you grow, you mature, you grow out of these things that are below you. So how could you think that Allah created these things? And Allah who is above all and has more capacity and the highest perfect wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the perfect wisdom and perfect authority, how would he, how could you think that he created those things as a pastime for no reason? So, the meaning here is that the earth, the sky and everything that's happening and everything that has been created, that's not without reason. And the biggest reason behind it is that people look into it, people ponder over it, and people find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Instead, we launch the truth. بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ Against falsehood. Every single thing that is created in the skies and the earth and what's happening, everything has a clear proof of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala launches the truth over falsehood. فَيَدْمَغُهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقُ فَيَدْمَغُهُ The meaning here is that it is when the truth attacks the falsehood, the falsehood is smashed and the smashed so strongly with such strength that the brain, the dimag, the brain comes out. We, we, we say this is a, this is a, a proverb here in, in our language as well that we say that it was somebody had an accident or someone was smashed so, so hard they basically totally dead instantly that they, even their brain came out. فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقْ And in no time it is totally gone. وَلَكُمُ الْوَيْلُ مِمَّا تَصِفُونَ 
alas to you for what you describe that you describe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of this world and the creations of this world they are going on without any reason they have been created there is no real reason behind it it's all happening on its own alas to you woe upon you for thinking that وَلَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ to Allah belongs to him belongs whatever all those مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ in the skies and in the earth وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ and those who are near to him so the high creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creations that you see are low creations human beings they are sifli they are in this world they are living in this world the high creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angels and others who are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ وَلَا يَسْتَحْسِرُونَ they neither do arrogance nor get tired nor they become lazy or slow so human beings when you look at ourselves in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some people who do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do it because they don't feel the need they do arrogance that they do they turn away from it that they are saying that we don't need this we are above this or this is not necessary and the other kind is those who become lazy and they don't do it even though they understand that they have to do it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you this is your state you know it fully well the creations that we have near to us they are such that they have neither of these problems they do not ever do istikbar which is to be arrogant to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala neither istihsal which is to become lazy or sluggish or slow down يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ they proclaim the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala night and day never slackening never letting go and Hadh Ka'ab ibn Ahbar was asked that how is it possible that the angels do the other things that the hadith tells us that they are appointed with this job and that job and this job and that job and they also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ they do it without stopping without even slowing down the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do they do that so he gave an example that my child has it ever happened to you that you were doing something and you stopped breathing or when you were doing something and your uh, other bodily functions that are going on they stopped so this is their way this is their life that they constantly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chant the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it does not hinder or interfere or make them slow in anything else that has been commanded أَمِ اتَّخَذُوا آلِهَةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ أَمْ هُمْ أم اتخذوا آلهة من الأرض هم ينشرون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that or have they adopted gods from the earth? هم ينشرون who raise the dead. so these gods that you are saying these idols or other human beings that the يهود and the نصارى would say that they are gods. then think about it that who are you making gods? if you were going to make gods, then at least you would have thought that the high creations of Allah سبحانه وتعالى you would say that those are gods these are right before your eyes they can never give life they can never give death you have never seen anything of that happening through them how could you even think that they are gods the other argument that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents here is that if there was any other god apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then there would have must been a conflict of domain being God means having perfect authority. If somebody does not have perfect authority, they cannot have, they cannot be a God. And having perfect authority means they have authority everywhere. Now, if you are saying that there is two gods, Nauzubillah, or multiple gods, then each of them are supposed to have at least some of their own domain. And in that domain, if they are gods, then what about the other God that you are saying? Then in their domain, he is not God, so then he is not perfect. And in his domain, he has his domain, but in their domain, he is not God. So he does not have perfect authority. So this is just something very simple that if you only think without bias, only this can tell you that there cannot be multiple gods because either you could be God or you could be multiple. And if you say that they are multiple, then they cannot be gods. So they cannot be multiple gods. This is basically such a big fallacy in their thinking. Allah is saying that there would have been corruption, there would have been friction among them if there was multiple gods. Allah is pure, the Lord of the throne. Allah mentions one of his greatest creations, Arsh. From what they describe, these partners that they associate with Allah, Allah is way high than these things that they ascribe to Allah. These gods that you make, Allah is such that 
he cannot be asked about what he does. Nobody can question him about what he does. He has preferred authority. Wahum yus alun and had Isa or had Uzair or you know even more foolishly these idols or this fire or the snakes or this and that whatever you want to take as gods all of them are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do they adopt gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say bring your proof if you if you want to say something then you should also have some proof to back it for Allah being God, this is the proof. This is this is dhikr, the Quran, Mamma'iya, which is with me. And the books that came, the remembrances, the uh, guidance that came, the instruction that came with the people before me, which were the prophets. But most of them, basically, they do not know the truth and therefore they are averse. They are basically no, not knowing the truth means here means that they do not have the capacity because of their arrogance and their jealousy they do not have this capacity to accept the truth and know the truth may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fahum mawridun that's why they are uh, aversive to the truth may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us the understanding of the Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among the people of Quran those who are very dear and special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samir alim wa tub alayna inna kanta tawab al-rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi sayyidina wa lana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala alihi wa rahmatki ya 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 rahmatki 